I've learned as a head of school that knowing a school's history is essential. It gives you both direction about how you'd want to grow the institution. It also gives you permission. We started with a unique approach to education. Uh, other schools in the area were not uh, taking place inside of living rooms. They weren't happening often with boys and girls learning together. Uh, they certainly didn't have their windows open. Gordon School was founded in 1910 by Dr. Helen West Cook, who was a female pediatrician at the time. Her older son, Stuart, had gone off to school, and she had decided that she wasn't satisfied with what he was receiving in education, and so she decided she was going to start a school for her second child, Gordon, and she decided to do that inside of her own home. She wanted to find a school for him that one was um, co-ed, and at the time all of the independent schools were single sex. She also felt strongly that it should be a school that connected their academic program. In other words, you wouldn't learn math in isolation from science, that math, science, reading, writing would connect. And at one time we were called the open air school because she felt so strongly that kids needed fresh air and you would have your windows and your doors open as much as possible that would help with illness certainly, but also just helping with the kids staying focused in their work. And I read recently in the new material for parents that don't, you know, don't be surprised your children will be going outside all winter long so make sure you pack them warm clothes and I think it's terrific and I think it's a continuation of her theory at the beginning. If you look ahead to the 1960s when Larry Miller took uh, the leadership of the school, he came here and the children and the architect planned the facility that would house the school's intentions. They could take their mission, the way they were approaching teaching, and then build a facility that was going to match the mission. It's built three-quarter scale, not to be cute. The purpose of it is to make sure a child would walk into it feeling like there was not much interface between where they were at home and where they were going to school. The scale of the classrooms and the doors, the chairs even, made us feel very comfortable from instant that we got here in January of 63. We keep them very age appropriate in a society that wants kids to grow up extremely fast. If we pull into the 1980s and look at Darcy Hall, who was the head in 1985, she attached the school's work to Ted Sizer's initiative called the Coalition of Essential Schools. The notion in the center of the Coalition of Essential Schools work was that the teacher is a coach. Thanks, we have one, two, three, four. In other words, the teacher's not directing the learning, but actually coaching these students and then putting them out onto the playing field of learning so they could actually practice and learn the skills, not because they're directed to it, but they actually own those skills. So what Gordon did in the mid-90s is go beyond the intention to be diverse and talk about it strategically and practically. I would say its single uh, most significant and critical change was that it has diversified itself racially and the faculty has developed a multicultural curriculum. I think it's too late to start talking about these issues in high school. We start from the moment they walk through this door until they leave, and they take that with them. And for an N through 8 school to do this, I think it's extremely innovative. I've been so impressed with what Ralph and the trustees have done in terms of adding in the multicultural component and really pushing to diversify the staff, to diversify the community, to make the curriculum really rich with multicultural experiences. We wanted our children not only to have children that look like them, but be able to relate to children that were not like them. And so now we can say that the school includes all kinds of people, boys and girls, people of color and white children, people who are affluent and those who may not be so affluent, family con configurations that include, include two moms and two dads. So what we've tried to do here is to build a community inside the school that reflects the world of Rhode Island. We felt that it was very important for our children to go to a school that had an intent about building children who were going to someday go out into the community and be a part of the larger world.